Well, I'm here today with Dr. Richard Gaines from Aventura, Florida. And my first question to you, and welcome, Dr. Gaines. <laughs> my first question to you is, what's a nice anesthesiologist like you doing in the whole bioidentical hormone arena? That's a good question. In my previous <laughs> life, uh, I was an anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, during, the, the, during the time, I, I, I went into every department. I did cardiovascular anesthesia, OB anesthesia. And I, I learned anesthesia. I always was interested in uh, age management medicine. And when, when, when my son was born in 1991, he was actually small for his size. And to make a long story short, he needed growth hormone. I said, what is this growth hormone stuff? Mm -hmm. I started researching it. I found the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. It was just being formed in 94, 95. And uh, I got very interested in, uh, in the science of age management medicine. So from that point on, I really studied it. And uh, anesthesia happened to be very good to me. And I uh, was able to retire from anesthesia and transition into this type of medicine. By the way, my son needed growth hormone. He doesn't need it anymore. He's in the Marines. He got stationed in Hawaii. He, he clearly grew. You know, it's yeah. interesting about growth hormone because it, it gets so maligned and um, because it's it, the lack of understanding. But the same thing happened with my grandson. We noticed at his little Little League games that he was so much smaller than the rest of the kids. So what do you think? Well, you know, hormones are such an interesting topic. And for those of us who are reaping the rewards and the joys of hormone replacement, um, it, it, you, you can explain to your viewers the symphony, how they all interact, they all work with one another, and has because uh, a lot of men think that they can just flow, throw some testosterone at themselves and all will be well. Yeah. Uh, what about the fact, symphony? It's, it's a very, it's a very uh, complicated response, but we are just touching the surface. Right. Of what everything is all about. Uh, we, uh, if it, I try to keep things simple. We know that as we age, um, we uh, lose hormone. And basically, it's really the organs that produce these hormones are pooping out. We're not meant to li live much past age 30. We're supposed to bring up the kids in the cave, help with the grandchildren. And in times of famine, the whole tribe moves away and grandma and grandpa can't keep up. They die of exposure or get caught by the saber-toothed tiger. And the fossil evidence shows that grandma and grandpa were 27 to 30 years old. So hormones weren't really necessary to, uh, uh, were designed, humans weren't, weren't designed to have hormones for a long period of time. We naturally decline and degenerate. So they did the degenerative diseases of aging, because we're living longer, have been exposed, like Alzheimer's, osteoporosis, and diabetes, and coronary artery disease, frailty, fractured hips. Even cancer goes up as we age. It's not just my opinion. It's actually in medical studies, supported in medical studies and in the literature throughout the world that adding back hormone, you can decrease the incidence of these diseases. I look at it as a no-brainer, but there's a lot of controversy. Unfortunately, you know, hormones got lumped in with anabolic steroid abuse of these uh, chemical hormones. We're talking about natural bioidentical hormones here that we lose as we age. Replacing them is beneficial. For the sake of the people who are watching this, um, uh, this interview, uh, bioidentical is biologically identical to the human hormone, an exact replica of once we of what we once made or still continue to make a little bit of. Is your practice primarily men? Is it primarily women? Is it half and half? Well, when I uh, started this practice, I actually uh, uh, started it in, in the early 2000s. Um, it was mostly directed at men because I was trained by a organization that basically cater to men. Mm -hmm. Men are easy. 50% of the population are women. I learned how to, uh, I learned how to provide hormones for women as well, because they do lose hormones for various reasons as aging goes on. And as a matter of fact, at menopause, women have zero. They basically have very low levels of hormones um, uh, and, require, and actually need hormone replacement much more than men. Men decrease over 20, 30 years. Women go to zero in a short period of time. Uh, that being said, balancing hormones is important. Um, you know, there's uh, women who are, uh, even young women, because of birth control and things that are going on, their hormonal systems are affected in a negative way. We try to uh, re uh, help them recover. And uh, it's been re very rewarding for me to be uh, treating 50% uh, of my patients being female. 
I was at a cocktail party last evening, and um, it was across the spectrum of age. And because of the books I write, all the women want to come up and, and know about this thing. It's almost like they want me to tell them a secret. It's for it, The women who are at this party range in age from 40 to 80. All of them were curious about it, but they all say the same thing. I'm just so afraid I'm going to get cancer. Yes. Can you answer that question? <laughs> Unfortunately, um, that is a pervasive thought. There's a study called the Women's Health Initiative Studies that were done throughout the 90s. And it was done because all the studies had been done on men, so they figured, okay, let's do some for women. And they collected all this data. And uh, what uh, they used something, uh, they used a couple of drugs, which actually showed very good improvements in, in bone density, mental health, uh, a lot of different things. They used two medications called Premarin mm -hmm. and uh, a Progestin, which is a Provera. These, these, these medications are not bioidentical. They're not identical to the hormones that, that women have. So I would think there'd be problems. What's really interesting is that they had different arms in the study and the Premarin arm showed a decreased incidence of breast cancer. That's just what the, the endocrinologist um, or the uh, gynecologist feel call it, uh, is the big problem. It's giving them cancer, right. Yes, yeah, they thought Premarin is giving them cancer. Actually, if you get it alone, it decreases the incidence. The problem is adding this non-bioidentical progesterone, which was called Provera, it actually caused clots and heart disease and all sorts of uh, bad things that happened, though not in massive amounts, but enough so that it got the media's attention and they bad mouth hormones across the board. So there's a lot we're learning now and, uh, uh, with hormones and there's published medical data showing the benefits of replacement of estrogen, progesterone, testosterone in females. There's no doubt about it. It's right there in the medical studies. And I wish that one day uh, gynecologists and endocrinologists would be on board. It's, it's happening. I see it happening over the years that I've been practicing. It, it, it will happen, you know, for any big movement like this to really take effect, it takes a couple of decades, but I've seen in the last 10 years uh, quite a bit of movement. When I first started writing my books, I could only find 30 doctors in all of the United States who are qualified in, in BHRT. Mm -hmm. uh, when it reached um, a, a couple hundred thousand, I could no longer put them at the back of the book, which is why we started foreverhealth.com, so that um, women and men could find doctors such as yourself who have stepped out of your standard of care, allopathic um, medical school trained box and learned about this new protocol. Uh, I'm sure you're on testosterone replacement. Yeah, I've, uh, I actually required a small dose for many years. Just so many, excuse me, I'm sorry. So many men, um, when I, of a certain age, and I'll say, you're not on testosterone, they go, I don't need that. So what most men are still equating testosterone replacement to is that means they're not the guy they used to be. Can you explain to them that, well, well I don't want to put words in your mouth, that I feel that the, the sexual part of a man, that's the last thing to go, that what starts degrading before? Oh, absolutely. I, I, you know, testosterone has been shown to be beneficial for just, you know, your, uh, your glucose metabolism. It's good for cholesterol metabolism. It's good for your sense of wellness, spatial perception, energy levels. The, 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 one of the most concentrated uh, organs that, uh, that, that have testosterone receptors is the brain. Motivation, memory improves. It's a, it, it's a very important hormone for men, and it's almost guaranteed it'll decrease at age 40, 50 years old. Um, now, that means you don't need, it doesn't necessarily mean you need testosterone. You might need a better lifestyle or some stimulation therapy, we call it. I won't get into that, but it's natural stuff that actually increases testosterone levels. But generally, we all need good levels to prevent those diseases of aging. Um, uh, of course, the sexual energy, energy in general is important. Sexual energy is a very important facet that I, that I look at. Uh, I, have a, I have the luxury of spending a lot of extra time with my patients now. Uh, in this type of medicine. And um, the, some of the top three goals that they have is energy, sexual energy, mental health, body composition. Uh, sexual energy is always in there. And if you spend a little time talking to your patients, it's a big concern and it's very prevalent and it's a, it's a significantly undertreated in, uh, in medicine. Well, 
you know, a, a healthy person is a sexual person. When you're not healthy, what is the last thing you feel like doing? So a, a great libido is an indicator that you are healthy. And um, hormone replacement restores you if you are taking care of your life in other arenas to optimal health. But it's finding the right kind of doctor. That's why I'm so glad to talk to you today. Because um, the women and men that I know who, like the people I uh, met last night, it was predominantly women who talked to me last night. They are not enjoying their quality of life. And I'm also talking about the 40 and 50 year olds. The 40 year old didn't have a sex drive. The 50 year old uh, can't sleep through the night. She's bloated all the time. She um, never sleeps more than five hours. And I said, if it were me, I would find a qualified doctor because um, I believe not sleeping is a real game changer. How do you feel about that? Absolutely. Sleep is a, also a very, and stress reduction, a very important aspect of just proper lifestyle and health. Right. Uh, you mentioned there were some 40 year olds actually had some issues with uh, sexual health. And it is, it, is a very common, it is a very common thing in younger women. Birth control, actually just one do dose of birth control in someone who's 15 or 17 years old, may decrease their testosterone production for the duration of their lives. This is a study- I never that, heard that, wow. This is a, a, so this is a uh, it's not a single study, but it's, it, it's something that the, uh, the International Society of Sexual Medicine, uh, at, at a couple of the meetings that I went to, indicated. Uh, birth control can cause a lot of problems, and they are monster hormones. They are not human hormone. So, um, it might be well, one of when I when I was a young woman, um, it it was like the greatest thing that ever happened. Uh, birth control pills. You could control your your cycle. It 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 gave you so much freedom. You didn't have to worry about getting pregnant. And I always say, at what price? You and I both know they will never do a study. No. But how many of us who took those birth control pills, myself included, ended up with breast cancer because of the imbalance of hormones in the body? I, I know you can't answer that, but I'm sure that you've pondered that yourself. It's a philosophical thing. I mean, I, honestly, we need birth control. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell. I actually don't tell them to say, hey, get off your birth control. It's poison. I don't say that. Right. I, say, you know, uh, I, I don't recommend it. I recommend other methods. But, um, you know, I never say, get off, it's going to kill you. The evidence isn't there. There are no studies. Uh, but um, it, it definitely isn't good stuff, taking something that doesn't look human. doesn't make sense to me. Uh, well, um, those of us who went to Catholic school, we had our, <laughs> the nuns gave us our form of birth control, which was abstain. <laughs> of course, I ended up pregnant as a teenager, so clearly that didn't work so well. <laughs> now, I see in all your information, and, and um, I really like your message, that right. it's not just about estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Uh, you also understand the thyroid and like to take these one by one, the thyroid. When, when a patient comes into your office, and I know as a doctor that you've been taught to assess within the first five minutes just by talking and looking at them, you can kind of start making some uh, conclusions or assumptions. When a person comes in, are you able to look at their face and their body and get an inkling that maybe their thyroid is either high or low? Yeah, absolutely. I see it. I, I see it a couple of times a week. And generally, you know, uh, if they seem uh, lethargic, if they have, have slow, slowed speech, I see a lot. Uh, when you shake their hands, if it's cold, if their hands are cold, it may mean maybe their metabolism is a little off and uh, thyroid function might be off. Um, there, uh, there's actually facial features that can develop. You can lose the outside portion of your eyebrow. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of uh, signals that we can get. Uh, I do back up uh, my uh, my interview with the patient with some labs uh, that are uh, that I think think are very important, and those are the free T3 and uh, you know TSH. Unfortunately, conventional medical doctors don't do that. They usually look at a T4 and a TSH, which is not they're not useful. I, I don't find them useful at all. It's the free T3. That's the free the real right. Number. And and uh, so often. Um, People, it will be dismissed. Well, your your thyroid's a little low. No big deal. I think it's a big deal, don't you? Absolutely. You know, in the labs, we look at labs. And um, laboratories, they test 4,000 people. They put it on a graph. And it's a, a, you know, a, a, a graph that has 
you know, two standard deviations out is abnormal. So 96% of the population is, is under that bell. Well, I look at it as this. Here's a spread of normal people. I look at, I consider it A, B, C, D. And if you have a C or D or failing school grade, you need to be better. It needs to be an A and B school, uh, school range uh, so that, uh, uh, especially with thyroid hormone, it increases your metabolism, thought processing it helps. It's a, it's a very important hormone that tweaks up uh, your, the heater a little bit. So, um, and also I feel that um, people, and in particular women, don't realize that the depression they are experiencing could be as a result of low thyroid. Have you encountered that? Absolutely. Actually, there's a, there's a lot of medical studies. In the uh, early 60s, late 50s, they actually used armor thyroid to treat depression. They didn't even measure thyroid hormone. Interesting. They gave armor thyroid to these people and they felt better. Uh, uh, emotionally and uh, uh, you know, relieve their anxiety. Uh, Can so, you explain to your viewers what is the right kind of thyroid to take after you've determined their actual deficiency through lab work so that you know exactly how much they need to fill the tank, but, but what kind of thyroid medication should they be taking? That's a good question. There is some controversy in what we should take. I sort of like the natural thyroid hormone. And that can be obtained from a bovine source or a porcine source. It can be made chemically as well. And, you know, chemically or synthetic doesn't mean it's not bioidentical. It actually, uh, uh, they can synthesize in the lab a human hormone. It looks out of her atom, the same hormone that we're deficient in. So I don't mind that either. Uh, but I do like a combination of the hormones T3 and T4 uh, because we take T4, it's sort of a reserve. In the body, we take T4 and we convert it to T3. T3 is basically the only thyroid hormone that does anything. We have T3, 1, 2, 3, 4, but T3 is the only one that, can, that works on the, on the cell and down into the, into the nucleus. The other ones need to be converted to T3. Uh, so I definitely want some T3 in the product that I provide my patients. Um, I wonder why so many uh, doctors and professionals um, don't test for T3, knowing it's that important. Well, as a matter of fact, their main uh, hormone of a choice is something called Synthroid, which, right. is, which is T4. T4 <laughs> has to be converted to T3 in the human body. There are some people who don't convert T4 to T3. So they, you can eat as much T4 as you want. You're not getting any thyroid effect. And uh, there are plenty of patients who suffer because they can't convert uh, Synthroid to T3. Uh, doctors find it found it nicer because Synthroid didn't give palpitations if you gave an overdose. Uh, so they felt, they felt, oh, that's the, that's the drug of choice. Oh. It, is, it isn't the drug of choice. The combination of T3 and T4 is the best way to go. Because I have found in my own experience when, um, let, let's say I'm taking two grains of Nature Throid yeah. and, uh, and then everything balances out and my stresses go away and I don't require uh, that much my body talks to me and by a racing heart at night, difficulty sleeping. And one of the things I think is so important for we lay people is to get as educated as we possibly can be so that when we call you, we're in touch with our body to say, I'm, my heart's racing, I'm not sleeping. Now you've got some information to work with right there. Absolutely, and I, you know, I, think, I think because of uh, you and your organization, I think that people are more educated, especially the women that come to me. Mm -hmm. uh, they've all read your books. Uh, exactly. they, they, have, they have great questions. It makes it so much easier for me. And um, uh, I think that's what's happening here. And that's why it's such a growing field. You know, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, which is the, one of the largest organizations of doctors practicing this, is now uh, one of the largest medical organizations in the world. Uh, so um, it, it keeps on growing, and every year more and more uh, physicians are interested. And that's where what I love about all of you who have gone into this area of specialization. I, I attend ACAM as often as I can. Yes. What I see is you all are not hoarding your information. You are sharing it with one another, and you all leave those conferences knowing more than when you arrived. And I love the lack of ego. That's right. In area of specialization. Yes, it's, you know, I'm, I look at your bio and it's, it's so impressive. Um, University of Connecticut, uh, Boston University, Tufts, and then Harvard uh, Medical School. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. What I, when I look at your bio here, I see um, 
someone highly educated who stood back and thought there's more. And um, even someplace like Harvard, they are not teaching this yet, uh, which is so surprising to me. Yeah. But there is a guy at Harvard, Dr. Abe Morgenthaler. I know you know who he is. I know him very well. You won't and, believe it. He, uh, he saw me. He recognized me because we, uh, I was an anesthesia resident. He was uh -huh. a neurology fellow. And uh, we were at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. So uh, he said, did you work with the Brigham and Women's Hospital? And this is like 20 <laughs> so it was funny. Oh, he's so darling. And I think his work with testosterone and, and uh, prostate cancer has just been incredible. How many men have not had to have their prostate, prostate removed because of his research? And how many men had an enlarged prostate mainly because they were missing the most important building block in the, in the uh, prostate, which is testosterone? Well, I agree with you. Yeah, so um, when let's go back now to women, because the women are going to come to you first. The men, the men take a while. You know, my husband, he watched me 20 years ago bloom again and come back to life and all the, the terrible symptoms, itchy, bitchy, sleepy, sweaty, bloated, forgetful, and all dried up. They all went away. I was happy. I was sleeping again. And I look at him and he's sleeping all the, you know, he falls asleep in the morning, he falls asleep in the afternoon while I'm making dinner, he falls asleep. And then we go to bed and he falls asleep. Why and I said, <laughs> yeah, I said, you like our old cat. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was so, you said men are easy and actually it, they are, you are, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's just putting it back together again. But when your husband's on, is he on therapy now? Oh, gosh, for, for 15 years now. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's very sharp. I know that he's fine. Yeah, and, uh, and he's 80. He's 80? He's 80. And I, I swear, he has, the, he has the youth of a 50 and 60-year-old. Wow. It's blessed yeah. to have this quality of life. It's, I've, seen it, I've seen it in my patients. It's remarkable. I play golf with a, my 91-year-old uh, patient. He calls me up on Saturdays, and I go huh. and play golf with him. He beat me. Uh, I don't want to talk about it, but uh, he, uh, the, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, he good. beat you. <laughs> That's uh, pathetic. He, he like, yeah, no, I'm not so good. But he he uh, hit the other tees in the front there. I don't know. Anyway, That's so, so um, but uh, now you want a 91 year old on hormones to beat you? To I do. The point. Uh, he's he, he's one of my poster boys. I can tell you, he's just mm. a great guy. And uh, you were talking about women. Women are a little more complicated. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, you have to tweak these hormones in, in, a, in a way that uh, uh, that uh, is individualized. Right. So it's not just you know one patch works for everybody. The bell dot at least you know they, they tried. You know right. it is better identical. The secret and the cost of the bell dot is actually the plastic that you stick to yourself. Um, uh, but um, it's not one one dose is not for everybody. It's different for each individual. And uh, it takes absolutely time. right it takes time to speak with them, talk to people, understand what they're going through, and then designing a, uh, a program for them. So well, um, that's what that's what yeah. these women were saying to me last night. Well, what do you take? I said it doesn't matter what I take, because what I need is different from what you need, and what you need is different from what she needs. I said what you need is the right kind of doctor, and that's why I keep coming back to this for the people who are watching this interview. With all due respect. Going to a doctor who has not gone back and educated him or herself in this new arena, this new protocol, is like going to a plumber for a heart bypass. It's that out of their uh, scope. And so what the, the viewership today is looking for is someone with the credentials, a real doctor, which you are, who has gone back uh, and re-educated because we're living in a different planet, we're living longer, and you need you need now to know how to put quality of life back. Sure. So, when a woman comes into you, um, do they usually cry in the first uh, appointment? Uh, <laughs> I'm not making fun because I did. So yeah, I, just I, would say, to... I would say 20% get, yeah. get tearful when I bring up some topics. Because we're at our wits' end at that point. Very we frustrating. Haven't, Very. We haven't slept. In my case, I hadn't slept for uh, probably a couple of years. I was tired all the time. And, and you can I'm see wearing... how it's a, vicious, it's a vicious cycle. If you're not sleeping, you're going to start suffering. Your, even whatever hormone production you have left is going to drop off real quick. And, and that stress blunts it even more. And then 
you know, what do you do in life? You take it out on the person closest to you. And I, I recall my husband, I've been with him since I'm 19 years old and we have this love affair. And I remember because I hadn't slept that I was snapping at him. At one point he said, Suzanne, a marriage can only take so much of this. And I thought, oh, and I wondered how many marriages break up over hormonal imbalance. Yes. And so when a woman comes in, I can't imagine how gratifying it must be for you, is it? That it is. You, can actually, you know you're going to be able to help her? I mean, I know it. And uh, yeah. they, can, they can feel it. And uh, they leave feeling much happier. I tell them, by the way, this might take two, three, four months. Mm -hmm. Hang in there with me. We'll be in touch. And what, that's one of my major things. My uh, follow-up is real good. Uh, I have, uh, I have uh, people helping me with, me with that. So we redesign. We just redesign the program. We retest test blood work. Make sure we're not giving the wrong doses, and uh, and they are very appreciative. Everyone, I am, I am sure when they call, because I always encourage women. I say you call the new kind of doctor, like um, you, Doctor Gaines, uh, with things that you never would have bothered a doctor before. Like I remember calling. I said, "I feel stupid saying this, but my leg itches like crazy." Mm -hmm. When I, if I were to call you and say, my leg is itching like crazy, besides telling me to scratch it, what else would you do? There, that, can, that actually can represent a hormone imbalance. Is that mm -hmm. Sometimes the ratio of estrogen to progesterone, uh, uh, change in someone that's been on hormones for a while, you might have to lower one or the other. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the interesting uh, uh, signs that we see. Uh, sometimes you have itching on the bottom of the foot. They've never had it before. Hey, what's going on here? Right. Uh, so I get I get calls like that all the time, but I work with I work with my patients on this. I look back and, at the letter that I had and I make adjustments. And do you also um, is your arena in the area of the gut and gut um, issues? Bloating bloating is such a big part of menopause. Oh yeah, it's um, you know gut health and the microbiome and the number of bacteria that you have. It's 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 exploding the science behind this now. Mm -hmm. It's a very complicated thing. But we need to have a healthy gut because if you really think about it, you choose material that you bring into yourself. Your bowels have to determine who is friend and who is foe. Without the foe, you absorb friend through a very complicated process. That's bowel health, a very complicated mm -hmm. process. It takes this material, breaks it down into molecules, goes into the bloodstream. It's carried to every cell in the body. It influences the cell service, sends signals down to the nucleus chromosomes and genes that you've inherited from your ancestors. I'm just going to give you an example. Let's say somebody has cardiac disease and they do the wrong thing for 30 years, you're going to express that cardiac disease gene. Alternatively, if you eat properly, you can suppress the expression of that gene and express all the others. And it, it's a whole science I just described called nutrigenomics. Right. Uh, uh, but it's, it's something that is coming out now uh, that... Um, uh, over the years, it's been more and more fun. Mm, but if, if um, the gut isn't right, the gut talks to the brain, the, 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 it, it's all, uh, the, there's such a... Um, uh, it's, it's called the second brain. Uh, because second there are so brain. Many, right. You have so many nerves down in the gut and the uh, hormones that are secreted because the gut is tasting food, things that are in there and will secrete uh, um, actual hormones that will influence your metabolism and um, satiety and and hunger. So, so someone watching this today could go to you for um, the major and minor hormones, minor being uh, why they call them minor, I don't know, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA, pregnenolone. When those are off, there's nothing minor about it, but those are the minors. And then the majors are um, what, uh, insulin, adrenal, cortisol, and um, what's the fourth one? I can't remember right now. I well, probably need estrogen. You can put growth hormone in there if you like. Right, yeah. and growth hormone. Yeah. So they can come to you for the major and minor hormones. Um, that includes your thyroid. They can come to you for gut issues. They can come to you for quality of life. Right. Uh, you right. know, exercise is important. Stress reduction is very important. You talked about uh, adrenal health, cortisol, and DHEA. Mm -hmm. These are all very important items. Uh, stress is a killer. Uh, so uh, we need to make sure we can handle stress. And uh, I give some techniques. I tell them, uh, I, I try to establish how important it is. Uh, and so we, we come up with things that, that, that work. Even deep breathing works. Uh, yeah. As, as we wrap up here, um, tell, tell those who are watching who want it, who need it, 
um, why they should come to you. Okay, well, there's a lot of me Just out there. Just brag. <laughs> Just yeah, brag. Yeah. Well, there's a, lot, there's a lot of me out there now, and I can tell you that uh, uh, I know uh, in my own family that because of the declining hormones, certain diseases have developed. In those who, who've gone along with me and have replaced the hormones as early on, they've done very well. And uh, my patients are continuing to do well. They're healthier. Their cholesterol profile is great. Uh, I, uh, I urge you to seek a, uh, an age management doctor. It doesn't have to be me, though I, uh, Suzanne's given me an opportunity here. And <laughs> yes, if one of the top things are body composition or sexual energy, I have come up with something called the Gaines Wave, which is actually technology that has been around uh, since World War II. Uh, and it's actually, uh, if you've ever heard of lithotripsy, uh, lithotripsy dissolves kidney stones. Uh, and uh, so that is now the gold standard to dissolve kidney stones instead of getting cut. Well, 100% lower, but it's 100 times lower uh, uh, energy, um, uh, sound wave energy can be applied to um, areas to increase blood flow. So with sexual energy, we are now, and there's a lot of evidence in Europe, there are, there are 50 studies showing the benefits of using this shockwave, I call it games wave therapy, and ED. Uh, and uh, I've offered it to my patients over the last year. Uh, there's been a demand now. Uh, people are, are, are begging me to give them one treatment a month, so we had to arrange something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very pleased and excited about the results because Viagra and Cialis, it's a $5 billion industry. Right. And why isn't Shockwave or Gains Wave here? In Europe, I think Big Pharma has something to do with it. This is a natural way of, uh, of growing new blood vessels and decreasing the amount of calcium in those micro vessels of the penis. Now, there's a lot of studies on men, not one on women. Women always get left behind. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know I, what I've offered, I've offered it, of course, my, men, my male patients pay for this. I offer it free to my female patients. So I'm collecting data now of females because blood flow is one of the first things in sexual response, and I'm getting some good stuff. I can tell you well, for those, of you, for those of you who are watching, look what you just heard. Um, you women can get your libido revved up again, and he will, uh, in, in this clinical trial he's doing, he will do you for free. You can get your hormones balanced. You men can get you back again, so you're the guy you always were. I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer in quality of life, and I don't know if this is your experience, but it certainly is mine. I am in such optimal health that I do not require a single over-the-counter or pharmaceutical drug. I'm not against them if I need them. If you need them, they're a godsend. But that's what this new way of aging and approach to life has done for me, and that is what you are offering people. And what I also want the viewership to have heard Dr. Um, Gaines say is that he's able to spend much more time with you than he had been able to in the past. And that, that is incredible. My, my friends in Canada under their um, socialized medicine get seven minutes with their doctor. In seven minutes, about all the doctor can say is it's going around. <laughs> yeah. So for all of you watching, if this is what you're looking for, Here's the doctor you are looking for. And he's a nice guy, too. <laughs> Thanks, Suzanne. I appreciate it. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to say before we uh, shut no, down? I, uh, I just want to thank you for letting me uh, express my thoughts here. And uh, I, uh, I'm very excited about the development of age management medicine and the gains wave. Gains wave therapy. That is, Gains uh, way. Okay, been, right been, on. We'll thank you it. so much. I really enjoyed this. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.